This is Mrs. Appiah with Lesson 20, Estimating a Population Proportion. Student Outcome for this lesson. Students use data from a random sample to estimate a population proportion. In a previous lesson, each student in your class selected a random sample from a population and calculated the sample proportion. It was observed that there was a sampling variability in the sample proportions, and as the sample size increased, the variability decreased. The focus in this lesson is to derive the center of the sample proportions, or the mean of the sample proportions. You will begin to see how the distribution clusters around the mean of the distribution. This center is used to estimate the population proportion. Pause the video and copy the essential question. How is a population proportion estimated? Example 1, the mean of sample proportions. A class of 37th graders wanted to estimate the proportion of middle school students who were vegetarians. Each 7th grader took a random sample of 20 middle school students. Students were asked the question, are you a vegetarian? One sample of 20 students had three students who said they were vegetarians. For this sample, the sample proportion is 3 out of 20, which is equivalent to 15 hundredths. Following are the proportions of vegetarians for 7th graders found in 30 samples. Each sample was a size of 20 students. The proportions are rounded to the nearest hundredth. How many samples are needed to calculate a sample proportion? You only need one random sample. How is the distribution of the sample proportions formed? It is a dot plot of the results from many randomly selected samples. What is the population proportion? The actual value of the proportion of the population who responded yes to the survey. Exercises 1 through 9. The first student reported a sample proportion of 0.15. Interpret this value in terms of the summary of the problem in the example. 0.15 is equivalent to 15 one hundredths, which is equivalent to 3 out of 20. 3 out of the 20 students surveyed responded that they were vegetarian. Question 2. Another student reported a sample proportion of 0. Did this student do something wrong when selecting the sample of middle school students? No. This means that none of the 20 students surveyed said that they were vegetarian. Question 3. Assume you were part of this 7th grade class and you got a sample proportion of 0.20 from a random sample of middle school students. Based on this sample proportion, what is your estimate for the proportion of all students who are vegetarian? Well, your estimate would be 0.2 or 0.20. Question 4. Construct a dot plot of the 30 sample proportions. When you construct your dot plot, you'll want a number line, and you will need to label your number line 0 through 0.30 at increments of 5 hundredths, 5 hundredths, 10 hundredths, 15 hundredths, 20 hundredths, etc., and then dot each number from the previous page. So here's what your dot plot should look like. Double check it to make sure that it is correct. Question 5. Describe the shape of the distribution. So you want to know is the data clustered? Is it symmetrical? Is it mound shaped? Is it skewed? The data here is nearly symmetrical, or mound-shaped, centering at approximately 0.15. Question 6. Using the 30 class results listed above, what is your estimate for the proportion of all middle school students who are vegetarian? And explain how you made your estimate. I am estimating it to be about 0.13. I chose this value because the sample proportions tend to cluster between 0.10 and 0.15. Question 7. Calculate the mean of the 30 sample proportions. Okay. Then you're going to use the data from page 51, or you could use the dot plot on page 152. 
you're going to add all of your data points. Then you're going to divide by 30. When you add those, you get 4.6 and then divide by 0.30. The mean of the samples to the nearest thousandth is 0.153 or 153 thousandths. How close is this value to the estimate you made in exercise 6? The value is close to my estimate of 13 hundredths. It is off by only 2 hundredths. Question 8. The proportion of all middle school students who are vegetarians is 0.15, 15 out of 100. This is the actual proportion for the entire population of middle school students used to select the samples. How the mean of the 30 sample proportion compares with the actual population depends on the student samples. In this case, the mean of the sample proportions, which is 0.153, is very close to the actual population proportion of 0.15. It is off by only three thousandths. Question nine. Do the sample proportions in the dot plot tend to cluster around the value of the population proportion? Yes, they cluster around 0.15. Are any of the sample proportions far away from 0.15? Look at your dot plot. List the proportions that are far away from 0.15. Okay, so our dot plot, let's take one more look at that. Are any of them far away from 0.15? Well, this is far away from 0.15. And this is point far away from 0.15. So yes, there are some that are far away. A few data points, 0 and 0.30, are far away from the population proportion. Example 2, estimating population proportion. 200 middle school students at Roosevelt Middle School responded to a several survey questions. A printed copy of the responses the students gave to various questions will be provided by your teacher. The data are organized in columns and are summarized by the following table. We have column headings of ID, travel to school, favorite season, allergies, favorite school subject, favorite music, and what superpower would you like? The last column in the data file is based on the question, which of the following superpowers would you most like to have? The choices were invisibility, super strength, telepathy, the ability to fly, or the ability to freeze time. Think about it, which superpower would you choose? The class wants to determine the proportion of Roosevelt Middle School students who answered freeze time to the last question. You will use a random sample of Roosevelt Middle School population to estimate the proportion of students who answered freeze time to the last question. A random sample of 20 student responses is needed. You're provided the random number table you used in a previous lesson. A printed list of the 200 Roosevelt Middle School students is also provided. In small groups, complete the following exercise. Select a random sample of 20 student responses from the data file and explain how you selected the random sample. We're going to generate 20 random numbers between 1 and 200 using the random number table. The random numbers chosen represent the ID numbers of each student. We'll go to that ID number row and record the outcome as yes or no in the table regarding the freeze time responses. In the table below, list the 20 responses for your sample. So we've go ahead and we've gotten our numbers and we've looked them up in the table and these are our responses. We have yes, no, 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 yes. No, 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 yes. Yes, no, 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 yes. No, no, 
no, no, no. Apparently freeze time is not the most popular. Estimate the population proportion of students who responded freeze time by calculating the sample proportion of the 20 sampled students who responded freeze time. So we know that there were 20 people in our sample and we wanna know how many said yes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five people said yes. So we count the yes replies in our sample. In this example, the proportion is five out of 20, which is 0.25, one fourth. Combine your sample proportion with other student sample proportions and create a dot plot of the distribution of the sample proportions of students who responded freeze time to the question. So we've got our dot plot with our number line and we're all going to put our data on there. Notice that our increments go in hundredths, five hundredths, ten hundredths, fifteen hundredths, twenty hundredths, etc. And we had nobody at zero and we went up to 0.35. So um, take a minute and copy this dot plot. Question E, by looking at the dot plot, what is the value of the proportion of 200 Roosevelt Middle School students who responded freeze time to the question? So this is not a mathematical question, this is estimating by looking at the dot plot. And we want to see where is the data clustered. We're going to use 0.2 for our value because the data clusters around 0.2. Usually you will estimate the proportion of Roosevelt Middle School students using just a single sample proportion. How different was your sample proportion from your estimate based on the dot plot of many samples? My sample proportion is off by 5 hundredths, 0.25 compared to 0.20. Circle your sample proportion on the dot plot. How does your sample proportion compare with the mean of the sample proportions? My sample proportion is 0.25, which is slightly greater than the large class sample proportion of 0.20. Calculate the mean of the sample proportions. Locate the mean on the sample proportions in your dot plot and mark this position with an X. To find the mean, add the values of all the sample proportions and then divide by the number of samples. When I add the data, I get 5.95 and then I divide by 30 samples. This gives me a value of 0.198 and rounded to the nearest tenth, that gives me 0.2. Then put an X on that position. So we're going to put an X at 0.2. 0.2 is right here, or actually let's put it down here, 0.2. So my value was right here at 0.25, and this is actually the mean right there. How does the sample, how does the mean of the sample proportions compare with your sample proportion? It is slightly smaller than my sample proportion, spot on with the class's sample proportions. In this lesson, you have learned sample proportions from random samples tend to cluster around the actual value of the population proportion. So although the sample proportion will not be exactly the same as the population proportion, I can expect it to be close. Therefore, the sample proportion makes a good estimate of the population proportion.